Welcome to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower, brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash your 20-minute podcast. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Now, here's your host, David Brower. Thanks, Alan. This is David Brower with your 20-minute podcast. And our guest today is Christopher Shea from Life's Journey. And he helps you find peace, addiction recovery. He does life coaching, counseling. He spent over 20 years in the addiction counseling field as a clinician and administrator. And uh, he's gone on to do so many things like Life's Journey. He's got a great blog there. He's a director of campus ministry at a high school in Maryland and adjunct professor in the Family Studies and Community Development Department of the School of Liberal Arts at Townsend University and McDaniel College's Graduate School of Counseling. Good Lord, man, how do you have time to see any clients? <laughs> so sometimes I wonder, but I I do get in a good uh, five plus a day, so <laughs> Chris, I don't know. Well, welcome to the show. It's good to have you here, man. I'm excited to talk to hey, you. It's great to be on the show. I really appreciate it. You bet. You bet. So tell me, how did you get started in this? And I know from watching some of your videos and stuff, it was like, uh, here's this epiphany you had as a young man, and it just kind of carried you through. Does that seem right? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you know, I, I've been working in uh, the counseling and addiction field for a little over 20 years. And, uh, yeah, recently looking more on uh, life coaching and helping people to discover their inner peace. And a lot of that came about through my own journey of, um, oh, I, mean, I guess we're talking about eight years now or so. Okay. Um I used to tell people like three to four years. Now we've gotten up to eight. <laughs> well, where's time, time, fly, time flies when you're having fun, man. <laughs> I, I guess it does. So, so your life's journey for four years ago or eight years ago, whichever calendar you're looking at, what, um, tell me about that. Well, typically I'm a type A person. I, I'm always the, uh, one who tries to stay busy and life for me just got so busy and so filled with anxiety and so out of focus uh, that I decided to take a change. And I got out of the uh, administrative uh, scene, got out of the corporate world, moved out of the city into the country. Um, and uh, that's when I took the job with the high school. And um, that first summer, having a summer off uh, after that first academic year, well, that wasn't good for somebody like me. Right, right. Um, yeah, I understand. Yeah, I didn't really know what to do with myself, and it really hit me hard. And, and looking back in a very good way, I mean, it was a time that I really needed to uh, take stock. And in taking stock, I uh, started writing my blog, and as time has gone on, it's grown from just the blog to the life coaching work to the speaking, the writing, all the things that I'm doing right now. So, I mean, to me, and I, I do blogs, podcasts, what have you, but to me, that's like the um, 20, 21st century of uh, journaling. You know, I know, I know lots and lots and lots and lots of people still journal. I have friends that have like 200 journals, but the way my brain works um, it's more electronically than it is, you know, on paper. Is that kind of what, how you transformed yourself, how you discovered yourself was through the blog? Almost oh, definitely. And what I really decided to do that first summer was, uh, work on journaling. I had done journaling in the past, uh, with, uh, great success. So I was going to do it again, but this time I figured, well, with, uh, the internet, the way it was and technology and all, let me just put this, uh, you know, online. And if anybody cares to read it, that's great. Maybe they can gain some insight or leave a comment and help me to gain some insight. Nice. Uh, and if nobody read it, that was fine too. That that really was the attitude of this is really for me and anything beyond that is, is going to be bonus the way that I look at it. Well, I think anytime you you have the gift of being able to put something out there that is authentic uh, and still very vulnerable, I think people are attracted to that. And, and that's what I was finding. And I really was surprised that people were reading the blog and people were commenting. So I moved into a bit of the social media, and eventually moved into doing a podcast. And, you know, things just continue to evolve as I realized 
that people were hungry for the message. And the more that I was growing and, and understanding my own transition in life, the more I was realizing others are doing the same thing. So yeah. why should we all be reinventing the wheel? Maybe I can find the right way of getting my message out and help other people to do the same. And what is the message? The long and short of it is the message is inner peace and finding your own inner peace. And I look at that as different from uh, success and happiness. You know, I, I think most Agreed. of uh, people are looking for success and happiness in life. And, and that's where, um, you know, they're, they're finding uh, failure. You know, it's not working for them. One of the, one of the, I don't know if it's a buzzword, but it's certainly a, a word that has come into my world in the last year and a half in a, in a heavy onslaught, um, and that is mindfulness and, and being able to learn different ways to be mindful, whether it's inner peace, whether it's dieting, whether it's relationships. What, I'm sure that plays a part in, in, your, in your world, right? Oh, most definitely. Um, one of the interesting things in you know, as I look back at my 20 some years of counseling work, we didn't call it mindfulness, right? but that's what I was doing with my clients. You know, right now that is the big word and, and I'm not a big fan of buzzwords, but right. mindfulness has been around for millennia. So, you know, it doesn't matter what we call it these days. The technique is uh, tried and true and even recently uh, scientifically studied and proven. So, yeah, everybody's doing that. My version of, of the mindfulness is really looking at what can we do while we're living in the present moment to find that inner peace within ourselves. But it's not an inner peace which is selfish. It's an inner peace that's going to lead us then outside of ourselves to then help other people and hopefully help society as a whole. Well, in this world of immediate gratification and going 100 miles an hour and having six jobs and all those different things that some of us are, are involved with, um, figuring out a way just to be present is very, very tough, right? Oh, extremely tough. I, I mean, at times I still struggle with that. And, and, you know, I really work with a lot of my clients who are struggling with that because we are distracted and bombarded with noise and information and it, it, it's just incredible yeah. um so really finding that balance of not getting rid of technology uh, but really using the technology as a tool which is you know a part of our life but not the end-all be-all of our life right even though sometimes we think that Oh, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm at fault for that as well. So. <laughs> I told my wife just the other day, I go, man, I am so connected, but, you know, and then I justify it in some way, shape, or form. But, <laughs> but there are days oh. where you just go, I mean, on vacation, I turn it all off. Uh, but that's Excellent. about the only time, you know, and it's, it's fascinating and frustrating, both at the same time. Yes, and, and I agree. And, you know, I... I think part of the issue is technology blossoms so quickly, we really didn't have time to adjust to it. That's true. And it changes so fast uh, that it's hard to keep up. So you're kind of in that, you're kind of in that tunnel all the time, you know, until you figure out a way to pull yourself out a little bit. And that's where you come in is, is getting people out of that tunnel long enough to figure out a way to find inner peace, be present when it's important and uh, kind of put yourself first a little bit, even if it's five minutes a day, I would assume. Oh, exactly. I mean, I'm not asking people to do a lot, you know, as far as it goes to, like, formalized type of meditation. I mean, five to ten minutes a day, if that's the best that you can do, then do the best that you can do. There you go, yeah. But it's also, to me, all about perspective and, and changing our views on things. And we could be doing that all day long. So even if it's formalized meditation is a short period, our entire day could be shifted in perspective if, you know, we took the time to figure that out and try to find out, you know, what, what's healthy for us and what's going to help lead us to that inner peace. And you kind of walk through that, whether it was by design or not. It, when you left the corporate world, moved to the country, uh, started discovering yourself you were kind of putting those pieces in motion, whether it was conscious or not. You really started uh, 
you really started to walk the walk, didn't you? Oh, exactly. And, you know, a lot of what I write, a lot of what I talk about, it's coming from reflecting back over these years and looking at those experiences. You know, it, it wasn't planned out this way. I, right. I didn't have a, you know, strategic plan for the next five-year vision or anything like that. It, it unfolded. And luckily, gratefully, I, I was open to the unfolding for the most part. Right. And that's what I reflect on nowadays when I'm giving talks or writing or, you know, whatever I'm doing is, you know, focusing on what have I learned through this so that, again, you know, nobody else really has to reinvent that wheel. It, it worked for me. I'm sure it'll work for a few other people. So here's what worked for me. Give it a shot. And if a type A can do that, guess what? Anybody can do that. <laughs> <laughs> My point exactly. So it seems exactly. to me, and I think I saw this on one of your one of your videos, if I'm if I'm right, but there are so many people out there uh, giving lectures, speaking uh, to groups, uh, having s- stadiums filled with people or whatever. Uh, teaching them what they know by way of, here, by my book. And it's, I find that troubling um, because it's not as genuine and authentic as your approach is. Uh, I appreciate your latter point. Um, that's really what I'm trying to put across. You know, it's, and, and I'm not going to call out anybody, but no, 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 absolutely. it does seem to me in, in what you're saying, you know, as I look around that I, I do begin to question what is it that you're asking people to do? You know, when somebody says, you know, I, I can teach you how to be success, you know, successful financially, uh, you know, buy my book and you'll be as, you know, financially successful as me. Right. You know, right. the cynical side of me looks at them and says, well, yeah, the secret of your success is people buy your book and you become rich. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So how is that helping them? <laughs> you know, because you're probably telling them to write a book and sell it. So, no, and that's where what I look at, you know, in life is honestly, and this is going to probably sound horrible, but this is just the way I am. I really don't care if people are successful or not successful, if their life is going well or not going well, to be honest. What I care about is, do you have inner peace through it? Because okay. life that's is excellent. always, yeah, yeah. I mean, life's always going to throw us, you know, curveballs. Life's, life's always going to have, you know, hardships and things like that. So. I'm not here trying to say to people, hey, if you follow a certain formula, guess what? Your life's going to be wonderful forever and ever and ever. No, I mean, hopefully you find that inner peace so that when life doesn't go well, you can figure for yourself, well, how best do I get through this? Do I have the tools to make my way through this? There you go. Now you're talking. I couldn't agree more, man. It's uh... So do you, I mean, I know you speak in groups and I know you take, have clients one-on-one and I know you have a couple of books out there and that's, but the, it seems to me the overall approach of all of that is just exactly what you said is to help individuals find their inner peace. And if you want to buy my book, great. If you want to bring somebody along to the lecture, great. Uh, if you want to make a million dollars, go to the guy next door. Pretty much. Yeah. And, and then make a donation to me. But well, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, you got um, a little food on the table while you're living in the country. Yeah. Come on. You know, I, mean, I can't grow all my food, but yeah, the, and, and that's exactly the way that I look at it. I mean, honestly, you know, I'm out to get the message across and I'm trying to use technology and getting out and into the crowds as, as any means that's available to get that message out. So yeah, if, if you can get it through listening to a podcast or buying my book or going to a talk, any of the above, none of the above, you know, what, whatever it is, the right. freebie of just reading my blogs. Right. You, right. Know, you don't have to pay anything to read my blog. So, you know, I just want the message out there because I honestly think we could live in a much better society if people really spent the time to find their inner peace. Could and then I think people more. are trying that. They just don't know how to do it. They don't know how to do it. And I think once they start to taste it, if that's the right word, once they start to taste it, then the word of mouth goes along and go, man, people start looking at people with a different, with a different heart and a different look. It's like, what changed in you? What's different about you from a month ago? You know, and they have this exactly. conversation and they learn about inner peace. Well, I want some of that. How do I do that? Exactly. And to me, that's part of that changing perspective. And, and, you know, the, the thing really holds true. If, if I start looking for goodness around me, I will find it. Exactly. And many of us who say there is no good to be found, are you really looking for it? Or 
you know, are you still stuck on all the negatives? And to me, that's part of that perspective shift. So yeah, if you start looking for it, you'll find it. And when you find it, you'll start feeling it. And I hope others notice what you're feeling. I agree. I agree. I'll share you a quick, a short story. I call it my uh, 101 days from hell. It was uh, April of 2007. I was diagnosed with, uh, uh, or no, I had, what did I have? I had, uh, yeah, I was diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer. Uh, mm. The next month I had back surgery. Uh, in June, I had my prostate removed. Uh, nine days after that, I had a stroke. And I survived all that. And all of a sudden, the world of gratitude entered my life. And mm. I've never looked back, to be honest with you. I mean, I have a gratitude tattoo for crying out loud. So when I go to bed at night, I'm filled with gratitude. When I get up in the morning, I'm filled with gratitude. If I have to bend over during the day and pick up some dog poop, okay, I'm good with that too. You know, it's just whatever whatever people can find to change their perspective and and find that inner peace. And you've got lots and lots of tools and expertise to help them do that. Well, uh, you know, again, it, it's what I've found through my life. And, and I appreciate you sharing your story because, you know, what I look at in perspective shift is the whole fact that we have choice. Yeah. And through that ordeal of yours, you had a choice of finding that gratitude and living that gratitude or sitting back a, as the victim. Yeah. And, you know, then that's how you're going to feel and that's what you're going to project and that's what you're going to, uh, you know, bring towards you. And to me, it, it really is, you know, let's make the choice in life. And when people say, you know, I, I want to live a positive life, I want to feel positive, you know, my comeback usually is, why aren't you choosing that then? Right, right. If you want it so damn bad, come on. Yeah, then choose it <laughs> and do it. I mean, exactly. you know, when somebody says that's too easy, it's like, why does it have to be hard? Why can't it be as easy as choose it and do it? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Well, let's we're running out of time here in a couple of minutes, so I want to make sure that, that people are able to reach out to you. Uh, lifesjourneyblog.com is a great, great website, folks, and you'll you'll learn more about uh, Christopher through Media Press. You can listen to his podcast. He's got videos. He's got books, interviews, uh, workbooks, life coaching packages, web. I mean, the whole deal right there, and a lot of free uh, information to give you some insight on, on Chris's uh, background and how he got where he is, and hopefully— uh, open up a little bit of interest in, in you. A couple of your books, Coping with Adversity in Life, uh, The Journey to Inner Peace. I mean, those are all powerful, powerful topics. And it's, it, I, it's if I remember right, you have a third book out, right? A uh, third one is On Its Way, um, hopefully any day now. Okay. Uh, and that's a workbook uh, focused on learning about who am I. Wow. I love that. You are touching a lot of lives, brother, and um, and I hope this podcast touches even one. Uh, that'll be awesome. People want to get out and reach to you, reach out to you. I should say, uh, they need to go to lifesjourneyblog.com, and all your contact information is on there. Uh, everything about your life coaching, community support, everything's on there. It's a very wonderful website and easy to follow. Thank you. Uh, I've had a lot of people help me with that. I bet you, I know that drill. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, Chris, it's been a pleasure, man. Uh, may God continue to bless you and, and continue to touch lives as, uh, uh, as you are led. Uh, you are on a, you are on a wonderful mission. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. And, and the same, I really appreciate your time and, and the sharing of your story as well. So keep doing what you're doing. It's all great stuff. Your 20-minute podcast with David Brower has been brought to you by Audible. You can listen to any of David's podcasts anywhere podcasts can be found, including iHeartRadio, the Spotify mobile app, and at davidbrowervo.com slash your 20-minute podcast. Until next time, thanks for listening.